What's up guys, this is Mike Spricer with another edition of Gear Geek. On this episode I'm going to be going through my guitar preamps that I use for recording. I, um, I go direct into my computer and I use a uh, speaker simulator software called Recab that my friend Shane McPhee developed. It's very cool, very cool software. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. But um, I can't mic a speaker cabinet, so I have all these cool preamps that I use that I uh, um, can just go direct to my computer without micing a, a speaker cabinet. And you can get some really cool results with it. And uh, it comes in real, real handy when uh, for home recording and uh, for in small studios like my own. So, uh, to start off with, the first one I'm going to be showing you is I have, um, I have a total of six preamps that I use for recording either bass or guitar, um, but I only really use three of them. The first one of my favorite is the Angle 530. It's a very cool preamp. It ranges, I think, somewhere between six and eight hundred dollars, somewhere in there. Uh, it was recommended to my fr recommended to me by my friend Shane McPhee that it, uh, um, developed ReCabinet. He uses it too. Uh, very cool, pre cool preamp. It works very well with um, uh, cleans and leads. My, the second one that I use is a PV Rockmaster. This one isn't made anymore. This is a, I'm not sure what year they stopped making these things, but it, uh, it sounds a lot like an old school 5150 head. And uh, I got mine for roughly, I think, $140 on Craigslist. So they are out there. It took me maybe, it took me about two weeks to a month to track one down. There are a lot of them out there. Um, and you can get a really good deal on them. Third one, very popular, Marshall JMP1. It's very cool preamp. It's uh, programmable, so you can actually dial in your tones and save it into a patch, and your patches will always be there when you want to go back to them. And uh, they're all very cool. The way I use these primarily is uh, I use the angle and the PV for rhythm tones, and I use the Marshall for lead tones. The when I'm for rhythms. Usually I'll use the angle for my primary tone, and I'll uh, I'll back the uh, Rockmaster off a little bit. So this is the loudest tone in the mix. This is just kind of uh, you know fill it in a little bit more with the you know the oversaturated and a lot of highs. That's what I like it for. And uh, then I'll just switch to the Marshall for leads, just to uh, just kind of give my lead tones kind of a, a tone of its own to kind of have it stand out in the mix a little bit better. Um, I used to use the Line 6 Pods a long time ago. I don't really use them anymore. Uh, I don't know why I still have them. I don't really use them. I kind of just hang on to them just in case I do need them. I got a Pod and a Pod XT. I do like the, pod, the old school Pod a little bit better than the XT, I found. But I haven't really given the Pod XT a whole a really good run. Uh, I bought it many years ago and haven't really used it. And then the last... Uh, preamp I use is the Sans Up RBI, but I just use this one for recording bass, and we'll get into that on another episode. But what I usually do is, um, the way I, I use these things, right now I got the JMP plugged in, is I go into a direct box, and then I go out of the direct box and go into some form of a tube screamer or overdrive pedal. My favorites are the Zach Wild Overdrive, the GT09 by Maxon, and uh, Maxon's um, OD808. Those are very, very cool. Those are my three favorites. And uh, so I go out of there, I go into a, uh, I go into my decimator to clean up some of the noise. Then I go into a preamp, being the uh, Marshall right now. Then I go out of that back into the decimator again in channel two. Then I go out of the decimator into this cool preamp that I had made. It's a, a replica of an API 312 that I had made for me. And uh, I've kind of found that it uh, gives it a little bit more low end. And I actually go into the mic level input, so I have to be really careful about how hot I drive it so I don't ruin the unit. I do have a DI input that I can use for line level. But um, I've done some tests and I found that the uh, going in the mic level input sounds better. So go out of that and then it eventually goes into my computer, into recabinets, and that's how I get my tone. It sounds complicated, but it's actually simpler than anything. 
And then after the DI box, I split the signal and I'm also going into um, channel one of my API so I can record DI tracks in case I want to reamp something. And also, DI tracks are also if you have used Pro Tools or Cubase or uh, Logic and recorded a DI signal along with the guitar signal, DI signals can help you do some slip editing and um, tighten things up a little bit. Uh, it's easier to do that with the, the DI signal rather than. It's actually pretty impossible to do it with the actual signal that you're recording. Um, you know, if you're recording distorted tones anyway, clean tones might be a different story. So anyway, that's uh, part of my rack, and uh, I'm going to give you guys some close-ups of these. Here is the uh, close-up of the angle preamp. As you can see, it's two-channel. One, uh, one channel for cleans and one for... Uh, Distorted tones. Uh, going through here, you know, you got a bright switch. On the, this is the clean channel right here. And then one thing I like about this is it actually has a knob for low mids and high mids. A lot of EQs on amps and preamps usually only have one mid knob. So it's uh, kind of help things dial things in a little bit better. Contour knob is just a fancy, another fancy way of EQing things. I kind of find it just gives it a little bit of a beefier tone. High and low gain. The uh, this just switches between uh, the clean and distorted tones. And then if you want to bypass the preamp, you can press the preamp defeat, and it will uh, bypass the preamp. Now going down here to the PB Rock Master. There's a high and low gain. I only use the high gain. The uh, output on the PV is rather low. As you can see, here is the main output of the channel that I'm using, and it is turned all the way up. And with it turned all the way up is only about three quarters of the output of the angle. So this is one reason why I, um, rather than having to constantly adjust levels after I record, I go into my API and uh, I can use that to uh, even out all the levels. So no matter what preamp I go into, I have it set where basically if I, when I switch preamps while I'm recording, the levels are all exactly the same. It just makes things a little bit easier. Um, now this thing is three channels. We got clean channel, which is right here. And then you got a crunch channel, which is a lower gain, ultra gain, which is the third channel, which is the only one I really use. And then um, this is the voicing for both of these channels right here. This is basically just low, mids, and highs. Now, each of the, uh, the gain stages on the uh, Rockmaster right here, basically push and pull pots on both of the, the, uh, the gain knobs and in the, uh, the mid knob on the voicing. Basically, it's just EQ. It, uh, I like it with the, I, I prefer the sound with both of the knobs out. This is basically a lower gain, this is a higher gain, and this just shifts where the, uh, um, what mids you're either scooping or, or, or uh, attenuating or boosting. And I prefer it with it out. And as you can see, these are my settings. This is actually with the project that I'm working on right now. Uh, the settings that I'm using. And uh, on to the Marshall JMP1. Basically, it would, uh, if you want to um, adjust your settings on this, you just select, let's say, I want to adjust the high end treble. As you can see, it's on five right now. And then you can just use this knob, and it's either negative six or plus six. And uh, that's how you can uh, adjust it on all these things. And then once you find the, uh, the setting that you like, you're on patch 26, you uh, hit store, and it'll store. You can scroll through and select another channel if you want, or hit store again, and boom, sound is saved in patch 26. So if you want to have uh, a bunch of different tones, which I do. You can just scroll through and it'll be exactly the same. Pull it up. A lot of people don't like configurations like this in amps because they feel it takes away from the tone. Um, a lot of uh, 
the studio guys will take a look at an app and see a million knobs on it and almost oh, know right away that uh, it's not going to sound very good. Um, which I think is definitely the case. I've had a friend that uh, had Engels, a uh, nifty little MIDI programmable uh, two preamp, and he told me it wasn't very happy with its own. But this thing is awesome. Love it. And going over here, the uh, I'm actually I do not have this on right now. I uh, I left it off when I recorded the sound examples because I wanted you guys to be able to um, you know hear the difference you know the, of uh, tones that are you know more true to the actual preamp rather than having an overdrive pedal in front of it. And I usually do like to have it. And the way I when I do have it on, I do think it kind of pushes the tone a little bit more. Um, the downside is it does make a little bit more noise and it can cause some problems. That's why I have my decimator, hook, decimator hooked up. But uh, this is basically how I have it set. On every uh, overdrive pedal or tube screamer that I've ever used, I always set it like this. The gain is all the way down, output's all the way up, and the tone, usually around 12 o'clock. Sometimes I back that off a little bit depending on how I'm feeling that day. Sometimes I feel like the tone knob needs to come down if there's too many highs. Uh, that's basically how I have it set. And I have Don Moffat's cool enough to give me their DC brick to power pedals. And that's the preamps. And uh, hope you guys enjoy the uh, sound examples. Feel free to give me some feedback. Okay, I'm going to go through some of these sound examples with you. I've recorded the chorus from I've Been Sober uh, to use as an example and two Cubase here. And uh, so basically right here is the, uh, the angle. Okay, now I'm going to switch between the angle and the uh, PV Rockmaster right now. Now I'm going to switch between the angle and the Marshall JMP1. for you where it's basically the difference between the PV and the Marshall. This is the PV. That's the difference. I'm going to post all these up online through uh, SoundCloud so you guys can actually go and stream 
stream it yourself and uh, hear the difference. So that's the end of the Gear Geek on preamps. Uh, feel free to post any questions or comments and I will get back to any questions as soon as possible. See ya.